freshmen Peyton Omania and Carter Sirachi showed up with big upsets on Friday night. So what else did you miss in the world of wrestling this weekend? Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name's Josiah, and welcome to the Fanco Wrestling Channel for this week's segment of Wrestling Headlines. And this was a Big Ten heavy weekend, with the Big Ten being the teams that wrestled the most over the weekend. There were a couple other duels that happen. I'll be talking about Oklahoma State and them closing out their season. But in the Big Ten, Michigan and Michigan State wrestled, followed by Penn State and Ohio State. That was an exciting night of wrestling. We also got Nebraska and Illinois, Northwestern and Minnesota, and there were plenty of exciting matches and big upsets. Unfortunately, we didn't get the Wisconsin and Iowa duel. I was looking forward to that on Sunday, but ultimately we didn't get it due to the virus now in Iowa being shut down. So, Let's talk about Michigan and Michigan State. This was quite an exciting duel. Uh, not necessarily in the score. Michigan beat Michigan State 28-9, which wasn't all that surprising. But the thing that was surprising was the big upset of 149 with Peyton Omania beating Kanan Store. Now, he came out, just headlocked Oman, or headlocked Store almost right away. I mean, within the first 15 seconds, headlocked him, lefty headlock, and had it on his back for a little bit of time and got got back points and almost pinned him. Now, it was almost better that he didn't pin him because people may say, oh, it's a fluke. He just came out with a headlock. You know, he pinned him in a headlock. Anything. Well, Amani came out and did it again in the same period. He headlocked Store on the edge of the mat, got more back points. He was up 12 to 1 in the first. And ultimately, Store did end up coming back a little bit, getting a couple more scores on him. The match ended up 15-8. to eight. This was a big win for Peyton Omania uh, on the season. So this weight of 149 in the Big Tens is going to be super interesting to watch. The other interesting match of the night, uh, Michigan-Michigan State, was Miles Amin of Michigan beating a top-10 ranked Cam Caff. He beat him 11-6. to six. To be honest with you, this was the best I have seen I have seen uh, Amin wrestle the entire year. I've, in of course, granted he's only wrestled a couple matches. He had a couple decisions against Penn State and Ohio State, but this match he just looked like he was back to form. Uh, kept up the pace from from the very onset, getting a first takedown, and and just continuously being able to take Caffey down. Now Caffey was able to uh, kind of retort with a takedown in the third, but it wasn't enough. Miles Amin ended up beating him eleven to six. In a very exciting match. In 197, I mean, right now, Miles Amin is a top-ranked guy there. But there's a lot going on at 197 pounds. So, we'll see what happens there. But Penn State and Ohio State wrestled right after that duel. And although the, Penn, the Nittany Lions beat down the Buckeyes 28-12, to the score, the score doesn't necessarily reflect how close that duel was. I was sweating a little bit. Like, I was a little bit nervous going into 197 pounds when the score was, I mean, Ohio State definitely could have won by that point. I mean, especially 80, I mean, oh my goodness. Thank goodness the Nittany Lions came back for my sake. But, you know, that, that was just a fun night of wrestling for me. Uh, sat out on the deck with a glass of whiskey, a cigar, and watching Penn State wrestling. There's no night better than that. The match started out with Malik Heinzelman beating Robbie Howard by a score of 5-2. to two. Malik Heinzelman has looking, been looking great for the Buckeyes. I've enjoyed watching him wrestle this year and just beating rank guy after rank guy, just climbing those ranks. Watching him at the Big Ten tournament, I'll be interested to see if he's able to do that again because he's jumped levels. Currently in Ohio State black shirt, that's a big thing that they do at Ohio State, just showing the guy, the best of the best guys in the room, and Malik Houndsman earned that this year. Bo Bartlett made his debut against Sammy Sasso. Now, this was quite the match. I wasn't expecting Bartlett to give Sasso quite the match. It was 5-3, to three, which was one of his closest matches of the year. Sasso's closest match of the year. You may already know that he has pins over top 10 ranked guys like Max Murin, like Mikey Carr. And now he beat... He, he was too much, ultimately, uh, for Bo Bartlett, who... Like I said, he gave him a match. And, and Bartlett, who just made his debut, he wrestled a couple extra matches, but... Seeing what he can do at Big Tens will be very interesting to me. I mean, Sasso is the guy to beat, but his other closest match, interestingly enough, was to Peyton Omani, who had that upset over Store. Now, Ethan Smith pinned Joe Lee at 165 pounds, and this was kind of su kind of surprising. I mean, I I know Ethan Smith's good, and I love watching him wrestle, but he came out and actually 
right after Joe Lee, they were on their feet, and then Joe Lee ended up uh, getting injured. He kind of tweaked his knee a bit, and I was I was nervous there for a second about what was going to happen, but ended up getting a takedown on Smith, but Smith immediately rolled through, got Joe Lee onto his back, and stuck him. That was big. That was a big pin. Uh, unfortunately, another loss for Joe Lee, but, I mean, Ethan Smith's a tough wrestler. Now, Carter Sirachi, speaking of tough wrestlers, holy cow, he just beat the number two guy in the country Again, and, and what I mean by that is he beat number two store, and then this week beat number two Caleb Romero. So he beat two number two guys this year. Of course, Carter Sirachi coming out, it's, it's kind of funny to see the reactions because he came out this year, lost his first match against uh, Washington, and I mean, he was thrown on his back, he lost, and, and fought back, but people were like, oh, well. Carter Sirachi's overrated. He's not any good. I'm like, just let's just wait a second and see how he does. You know, it was his first big match, especially after not having ideal training and everything else over the last year. Where you know, being able to compete now, luckily he can compete in like an Indian Wrestling Club type event. But like, man, he ultimately won this match by in sudden victory again, just like his match against Massa. Won it in sudden victory with the ride out. I mean, he's just tough on top. He even proved that in his loss. He was able to score back points in that. But Sirachi is tough on top, which is opposite because a lot of times freshmen are not as good uh, not as good on top or bottom, and, and, and Sirachi is somebody who is. Uh, Michael Beard pinned Gavin Hoffman. That ended up putting it away for Penn State. And like I said, they won 28-12. to what a duel. What a duel. They're a lot of fun. I, I always enjoy the Penn State and Ohio State matches, and, and this year uh, was not any different. And the other thing that was talked about a lot during this duel, uh, I mean, Shane Sparks, the announcer, was hyping this up the entire first half of this duel. He said, we got a big announcement. We got a big announcement. So what was the big announcement? Well, the big announcement was that the Big Ten will be, will be airing every session of the Big Ten Wrestling Championships this year, so March sixth and seventh, will it will be the Big Ten Championships, and I'll, I'll be honest. So here's my take on a couple of these things. One, I was expecting the announcement to be a little bit bigger. I thought that they were going to say there are going to be fans allowed at Big Tens this year. I was so pumped to see if that was going to happen, and no. It, so it's good that they are airing it this year, all sessions. Unlike in the past, a lot of these have been aired on F- Flow Wrestling when they had the rights to Big Tens. But this year, they're airing the prelims, the semis, the finals, the three hours finals that they will have coverage of. I'm super pumped to watch, especially because this year, we have championship weekends back-to-back. It's going to be a great time watching the Big Ten championships. Speaking of other Big Ten matches, and then we'll get into a couple things outside of the Big Ten. It was just it was a Big Ten heavy weekend. Deacon, Ryan Deacon at 157 beat Brayton Lee 12-0. to He didn't just beat him, he majored him. He beat him. Now, Minnesota ultimately ended up getting the dual meet victory, 29-10. to But this was a big win for Deacon. Big, big win for Deacon. He shot in, and not necessarily that I didn't think he could beat him or anything like that, but just a major over top five guy shows the levels that of, of where Ryan Deacon is compared to a lot of the rest of the field here at 157. Deacon shot in right away on a double and caught... Uh, Brayton Lee on his back. He was fighting for it. Ended up getting him in the Turk. Got back points. He was up 6-0 to zero after the first. And from there, he was just a clear aggressor. I mean, I don't even know if I saw Brayton Lee really get on on the legs uh, at all. De- Deacon was just constantly on the attack. Ended up riding him out to win 12-0 to zero at the end of the day. Pat McKee uh, was another big match here. Uh, beat D'Agostino. So this was an upset for Pat McKee, who's been pulling some great upsets. I've been enjoying watching him come onto the scene this year. Uh, he was down 5-2, to two, which is a minute left, ultimately got the takedown and locked up a cradle for back points and ended up winning the match. He's had an impressive year, like I said, with wins over Rayvon Foley. That was his first big match. Devin Schroeder, Justin Cardani. McKee's going to be fun to watch at Big Tens. Uh, same with Michael Blockus, who has come into the Big Ten this year and hasn't really you know, proved to be all that he wanted to be in the Big Ten, but he did pull a win over a top 10 ranked Yaya Thomas. So don't don't hold back for Michael Block. He'll, he'll be coming for you at Big Tens. 
And the last Big Ten match that happened before we get to Oklahoma State and them wrestling Oklahoma for the second time this year, Nebraska beat Illinois 25-9, to cementing them as a top three or four team, depending on where you want to put them with Mich- against Michigan. But there were no major upsets here. A couple matches to note, though. Dan Bronigal beat Peyton Robb by a score of 9-6. to And Taylor Venz, this, I mean, this was... The biggest upset, it wasn't, I wouldn't call it crazy or anything like that, but Taylor Venn's majored Zach Bronigal. The interesting thing to note here to me is that this is the first big win for Venn's of the year after his losses to Nelson Branch and Chris Weiler. This is his first big match and a good time to start coming alive just in time for the postseason. Now, speaking of other conferences right now, Oklahoma State finished the 2021 season undefeated. They finished the season 10-0. and this is a good win. This is a good season for Oklahoma State Cowboys, who beat Oklahoma for the second time this year. This time they beat them by a score of twenty-four to sixteen. The first time they wrestled them just a couple weeks ago, they beat them twenty-four to ten. It's been good to see Oklahoma State wrestling a couple of the same opponents. I actually kind of wish there was a little bit more of that in college wrestling, so we could see multiple duels and how they turned out. Now the only match that actually switched this time. The only match that flipped in favor of Oklahoma was uh, Mantanona of Oklahoma, who upset number 13, Dustin Plott. This was a good win, definitely a good win uh, for Mantanona. And he previously actually lost uh, to Plott earlier in the year, and, and he ended up coming back and beating him this time around. So that was good to see. Dayton Fix, oh my goodness. He's only wrestled like five matches this year, and he has... He's won all by major, or not major, by bonus points, either tech or fall. I think he has four pins on the year. It's been great to see Dayton Fix back in the mix at 133 pounds. He pinned Tony Madrigal. And A.J. Ferrari, another cowboy, uh, who's looking good with the win over a top 15 ranked opponent, opponent in Jake Woodley, beating by a score of 4-1. to one. And Ferrari's only loss on the year is to Noah Adams. It's his only loss, who previously was the number one ranked guy until his multiple losses to Buchanan of Wyoming. And and Big 12s at 197 is going to be wild. Now in other news, North Dakota State and South Dakota State wrestled this weekend as well. They didn't wrestle in an actual duel. They just wrestled in what they called the Last Chance Challenge, giving them the opportunity to wrestle over 40 matches. This is just great for Big 12 in training. Similar thing happened with Air Force, Northern Colorado, and Utah Valley. I like to see a lot of these schools that have branched out and found ways to get more matches in during this shortened year. Now, championship weekend is coming up. There's going to be so much coverage here on the Fanco Wrestling Channel. And so many new channel members. I'm just... The number of new channel members here that just want this extra content, but also want to keep supporting the Fanco Wrestling Channel so that it can keep growing, that we can keep growing and giving you even more wrestling coverage. I mean, my mind is blown, my heart is full, and I can't wait for championship weekend.